As looting and civil unrest continues in parts of Lagos, some youth leaders are disarming the youth and discouraging violence. One of such is Innocent Chukwemeka Ude, a, a filmmaker and activist who joins us now to give an insight of how he was able to stop looters from looting commercial banks. Thanks for joining us, Innocent. Thank Innocent, you can you hear me? Yeah. All right. There are several viral videos of you disarming young men, you know, trying to loot. So how, uh, just walk me through that experience. How was it for you? Um, it's, um, I, I'm watching the videos myself and I, I, I can't really imagine how I was able to put that up. You know, you know, I, I, I've been through a very tough two days, um, back to back situation of, rescuing young people and taking them to the hospital. I mean, that was how it all started. Um, first of all, there was a situation at Lekki, so it, that led to me um, moving about 12 people, 12 to 13 people to uh, the hospitals around Aja with my car um, because they had um, they'd been hit by bullets from gunshots. So that happened that night, and I was awake till about 6 a.m. donating blood getting my family members and friends, taking them to these hospitals to donate blood to these victims. And that was day one. And uh, the next day, I thought life was going to be calm. But no, we, we had the situation of the, the hoodlums coming out um, to take over the whole situation and creating chaos in the state and in the other parts of the country. And as regards for Lagos, we had the, the hoodlums coming out. They were breaking stuff and getting problems. And uh, there was now a second situation um, somewhere around Lekki, um, Lekki and Naja Axis, that was between um, the police and the hoodlums. And it was like a war scene where they, they, they exchanged fire for about seven hours. I am not exaggerating. Anybody who lives around the Aja Axis will tell you that the police and the hoodlums exchanged fire for about seven hours. Everybody literally ran. Now, after that happened, there were over 40 people that I, I managed to move to the hospital. Um, at some point, the hospital was filled up with people. And I can tell you that Doran Hospital had about 27 victims. And some I took to Grandfield Hospital at um, VGC. That's fine. If you can hear me, Innocent, we see that this protest started out peacefully across the country. And yes. then we saw that violence, you know, started to occur in different parts of the, the country. Some would say the youth are entitled to uh, be violent. Would you agree with that? No, 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 no. Nobody has a right to be violent. It's supposed to be a peaceful protest, but at some point, it was hijacked by the hoodlums who created chaos in the state. And uh, they started burning police stations, robbing banks, um, uh, looting shops, and creating a, a major um, disaster in, 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 in the state and in, the, in other parts of the country. And I couldn't just sit down to watch them anymore after taking multiple people to the hospital with bloods in my hands all over my body, donating blood from my body and my family also giving blood to these people. I, I felt like I can't stand them watching them destroy life and properties anymore. I had to come out and, and do something. That led to me speaking to them about giving me back their guns because they had guns, they had knives, they had police uniforms. And I, I don't know how I did it, but I, I was somehow able to talk to them out of it get their guns and call the army and, and I deliver the, the, the weapons back to the army. Hmm. Yeah. And innocent, this situation, I mean, an analysis of it could, could be safe to say that you saved lives, first of all, with you helping to, you know, carry people who were injured to the hospital and then the Samin youth who were ready, uh, you know, to fight. So what advice then would you say community leaders, you know, youth leaders have to play in, you know, a dire situation like this? I, I think we all need to come out and protect our city. We all need to come out and protect this country. I don't have a problem with people protesting and making their demand. I also did protest it and I asked peacefully for what I wanted from the police. But there is no way on my watch I'm going to sit down and watch anybody destroy this city. Lagos is where I was born. I am from Edo State. But Lagos is where I was born. I grew up in Lagos. Everything I have done is in Lagos. So I won't have anybody destroy this city. Neither will I have anybody destroy this country. So I would not see that and watch them looting banks. I mean, somebody got into Fidelity Bank and brought out the Fidelity Bank ATM and was going to open it. And that's when I stood on the ATM. I said, look, before you break this ATM, you might have to kill me first because over 40 people of you, I have saved. 
the same people went to Access Bank. I went in there and I chased them out. I, I really can't tell how I did this thing, but um, I, I guess God was with me and and he, he made them this thing because they probably would have hurt me, but I, I, I wasn't thinking at that moment. And I just wanted sanity and I still want sanity in in my community, I want sanity in my country. Hmm. And anybody who is creating problems out there, they need to stop. And I encourage and ask every young um, youth, every young leader out there, you must protect this country. You must protect this city. You know, you must protect people's lives and property. You must do, also, when you are trying to protect, you must do it peacefully, have conversations, give them reasons to stop. And, and I'm sure they would, uh, they, they would, they would listen. Thank you very much for your time, Innocence. We do hope our calm is restored very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.